Hello, Naya. Hello. Hey, everyone. Hey, Jess. Thanks so much for having me. It's the opposite thing, isn't it? Like, I feel like you're in charge here. Yes, I am running the show today. So, yes. So, Ramon and I have been running these boot camps where we teach web development and JavaScript skills for a while. Yeah. Um, and I was so excited that I, I, so I'm doing a little bit of work, contract work with Couchbase right now because Naya is my favorite person. Um, and one of the concerns that our learners brought to us again and again was, hey, how do I move outside of the tutorial environments? Or what does this look like in the real world? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what are we going to do together to hopefully fill that in? <laughs> so today, everyone, we are so, so excited. Um, we're going to be going through and teaching you all about what is a text editor and then working through um, building out a really quick um, project, probably as, as small as a hello world, um, building that in HTML and then um, uh, showing you all what your code can look like on a particular text editor. And that is Visual Studio Code. And uh, so let's, is, if it's not too rude, if it's not mm -hmm. too unkind, mm -hmm. Naya, I know that you're the smartest, coolest person in the world. Would it be rude to ask you to, you to introduce yourself? No, it would not be rude. I would love to introduce myself. Um, so, hey, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all. Um, my name is Naya Macklin. I am a developer evangelist for Couchbase. Um, super, super cool and fun. Um, and um, I have years of experience building out, um, a building community within within um, the engineering space. So um, I uh, run a little bit of a boot camp um, and Jess does as well. Um, but mine is predominantly for um, non-binary engineers and women engineers who are learning to code for the first time. Um, so that's what I love to do on my Saturdays. And then during the week, I work with my friends here at Couchbase as the developer evangelist for our developer relations team. Um, and so, yes, I'm, I'm super excited to be working along with Jess and Ramon, um, part of the Bad, Bad Website Club, um, and trying to introduce you all to a little bit of the projects that we'll be doing um, and sharing some space with Couchbase. What's a Couchbase? Oh my goodness. What is a couch base? Okay. <laughs> so because couch... oh, we're going to have to get abstract because remember the, the learners were, hello, lovelies. The what? learners we're working with right now, we're, we're, this is an intro to web development <laughs> and it hasn't even started yet. It starts tomorrow. Oh, wow. Gotcha. That's right. I love it. Okay, so yeah, just a small introduction to Couchbase for folk who don't know about it. Um, if you've ever heard of this thing, it's called a database. So we are a database company, and we, pr we create databases for users to be able to store their data in. So for example, if you were to look at, um, at any website, so um, uh, we'll, we'll take, uh, we'll take, Twitter, for example, a social media website. So every time people um, create a tweet, that tweet um, on the what we call the back end, that tweet gets sent to a database and stored so that we can have access to that database and so that you can see, um, uh, so that you can actually see that tweet come up on your timeline. It has to go somewhere. So um, Couchbase provides the database. We are one database, one example of a database um, that folk can send the information to. And you said a really, really important word where you said back end. And this is why I was so excited to work with you on this is for the boot camp, we're going to be building five different projects. Mm -hmm. And for two of them, they actually do need a back end. Mm -hmm. And in the past, when we've run the boot camp, they were like, hey, when I push submit, nothing happens. Uh, building a form. Yep. And that's because it didn't have a database. It was just sort of the front. Yes. So when we talk about the front end of a website, we're talking about the stuff you can see on the page. Mm -hmm. And the back end is going to be the stuff that does the stuff. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. So when one thing we were going to do in our streams together is start taking a look at the five projects yep. that we're going to be doing as part of this boot camp. But we're going to be doing them with real world tools mm -hmm. and not in sort of the, the code environment that Free Code Camp provides. Let me go ahead and just get, oh, am I allowed to share? I bet I'm allowed to share my screen. I'm so bossy. I never get to be the, uh, the guest. So this is a joy. Yes. Um, so what we're going to take a look at really fast is 
what the tutorial environment looks like, what we're going to be doing next week. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm so sorry. I think you're the, ah, uh, you're the boss of this. I got you. So this is hello world. Mm-hmm. And what we're doing here is this is all a tutorial environment. This is all within a learner's browser. And one of the questions I got asked a lot is, where do I put my code when I'm done learning on Free Code Camp? Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to go get one of the tools for that today. Yes, we are. And for folks brand new, don't worry about what any of this says. Mm-hmm. Oh, Naya, is it a bother to ask you to explain what Hello World means like in programming more generally? Because it's weird, <laughs> right? Yeah, so it's a it's a weird little thing that um, once uh, once you start to begin to code, it's one of the first quote unquote programs um, that you will build out when um, when you are a developer. So everyone here, you are developers. I want you to get into your mind and to normalize and to think of yourself as an engineer. I am a software engineer. I want you to say that to yourself every day, right? It's really important to try and and to believe it as much as possible because you are. And we're going to be building out some programs. And this is an example of that. So Hello World is one of our uh, like demo introductory programs that you write when you um, begin to write your first uh, line of code. So you'll see here that um, Hello World is actually showing the text Hello World is showing in a preview here. And really, that's just um, that's just exactly um, what it is. So you execute the code that's down in step three. um, And then that will actually show up in the preview section and you have written your first mini program. Now, some folk might say that um, HTML is not a programming language, it's just, a, it stands for hypertext markup language. It's just a markup language. Um, so um, uh, so that's true, but just to, just, just to simplify things a little bit for folk. I, I'm gonna say this again tomorrow on the mainstream when we start, but, but the, oh, is, a, is HTML a real programming language? Is CSS a real programming language? My sort of main thing is anybody yeah. who wants to come to you and say, oh, you're not a real programmer. Or this doesn't count. They're probably not fun. You probably Thank don't you. need, like, right? They're going to get into arguments about everything. Right. You can just ignore them. I, yes. prom- and l- I mean, unless they're your boss, in, in which case you have to be like, oh, yeah, thank you for your feedback. Right. But really, yeah, just ignore them. You are engineers. You are developers. This, You are programming, right? You're learning to program, and this is all correct. So you're all good. And the whole point of the Bad Website Club is we're not looking for perfection. We're just looking to have a soft, silly little time. Mm -hmm. So starting from tomorrow, we're going to be having a soft, silly little time in this tutorial environment. But today, we're going to take this away and we're going to go get a text editor, which mm-hmm. is where one of the places we can write our code in. There's other types of in-browser coding environments. Yep. And there are other kinds of editors that are kind of hard mode. <laughs> um, so, so programmers have about 15 different arguments we like to have. And we have them nonstop. Yep. Uh, and one of them is about the different kinds of editors we, we like to use. Oh. But one of the, I think what we're going to do for now is, um, oh gosh. So let's talk about a text editor and then let's go get the most yeah. popular one, if that's okay. I love that. So I, I and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something that I think is a little mm-hmm. controversial, but I'm willing to argue. I'm here for it. Um, but like softly, nicely argue. Yeah. I think where I can write my code right here mm-hmm. in the in the tutorial, I think this is a text editor. Yes, it is. I think technically we would call it an in-browser coding environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes you'll hear a text editor called an IDE. Yep. Oh, uh, integrated development environment? Yes, you got it, Jess. Are, are you lying? Because I... <laughs> I hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing. I actually don't remember. <laughs> but you can always look things up as a dev. Look, 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 look. So, mm-hmm. uh, oh, I'm not allowed to click on. I'm so used to being the boss and I'm the guest. Yeah. Uh, Sherith has, has made a really good point when I said, oh, the most popular uh, coding environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you click on on Sherith, it should pop up on the screen where everybody can see it. Ooh, in see. the comments. Uh, way ahead. Sorry, I'm bossing you around. No, you are not. Let me see. Okay, so here we go. Yeah. Perfect. Let me get in there. I said, hey, we're going to go get the, the, the most popular coding environment. Uh, 
And we had to share with B, like, VS Code. And Nikki came in to say, oh, Sublime Text and VS Code are very good. Mm -hmm. I can, So I use both of them. Um, and do you know what? This is going to sound – so this is a very old lady thing. Sometimes when I want to think and not ever be bothered by the computer trying to help, I use Notepad++ like it's 1996. <laughs> wow. I love that. And to code in Notepad? Just, just, just structure, just thinking. Okay. okay. Obviously, <laughs> some people use Google Docs, right? Yeah. So there's lots of different spaces that you can use too. Uh, amazing. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get that. I'm, I'm going to be lazy this time because I'm bossy mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I will get rid of this. So let's say hypothetically, I'm a brand new learner. I want to get VS Code because I've been told that VS Code... Uh, is very popular. Mm -hmm. I, one thing I'd stress is learners, you don't have to use VS Code. If you've got something else you like, That's amazing. True. We're just starting this so that when we're doing the real world projects, we're all on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. And just like Jess said, there's so many different options out there. And some people, what, what my mentor used to say is that people love to have nerd fights over which one is the best text editor. Um, don't mind them, right? You, you code in whatever space you want to, um, whatever space you feel most comfortable in. That's, that's the best text editor right there. If you absolutely must have an argument, I, I'm not here to stop you, but I, I'm just saying that it's, it's, it's. Sometimes it's sunny. Sometimes it's a weekend. Sometimes you just want to go outside and play. Like y'all can argue on the internet all day. We're not going to stop you. <laughs> That's but... right. We'll never stop you. Ah, so here we've got sort of a brand new install. We're gonna we're gonna pretend that we've never touched VS Code ever, which yes. is not actually that much of a lie for me. You you have to make new program. Yeah, no worries. So we've got a web browser here. Mm -hmm. Oh, which we got? Oh, so we've got we've got Chrome this time. Uh, yeah. Which is super chill. But if you use um, if you use Safari, that's super chill. If you use, oh gosh, what's the new one? Um, I use Brave myself. Brave. If you use yeah. Brave, that's chill. Yeah. If you use Firefox, I mm -hmm. hear that all the cool kids use Firefox. Right. Um, conspicuous Mozilla <laughs> Thermostime. <laughs> Gotta love them. Um, I, I should add that my day job is working for the Mozilla Foundation. So not with the Firefox stuff. Oh, Mitch, you're absolutely right. Arc. Arc oh, yeah. is the new one. So good. So Stop. good. Stop. Yeah. I'm not test driving another browser. I'm elderly. <laughs> so, so we've got our browser of choice and it can be whatever you want. And yep. we've got our search engine of choice. Exactly. And we're using DuckDuckGo because I'm a privacy weirdo and maybe you are too. I definitely am. Oh, like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very like nobody's business and nobody's business. <laughs> um, so how are we going to go get VS code? Okay. So we're going to put on our hat, our research hat today. And we're going to think about what are some keywords that we can think of um, when we're trying to figure out how do I get VS code? Right. So really a lot of times what you can do is just figure out what is the question how do I get VS Code? And you can type that directly into the browser itself, all right, into the search engine. So let's go and do that. Okay, how to get VS Code. I love the, I love the, the suggestions where it's like, how to get free Robux. I'd be like, I, I don't even know what a Robux is. I'd quite like, I, I think it's a video game thing. It, is. it definitely is, yeah. So is there any way you can push the, the command and plus to sort of in big in this briefly? Absolutely. Because we've got some options here. Yeah. So we've got some videos. Oh, look at that. Here's some other tutorials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody's got a million views. Oh, that's too Always many views. Free. Yeah. But I'm looking not just at the text that it shows us in the results, but mm -hmm. also at the URL. So here where it says mm -hmm. https.code.visualstudio.com. Yep. So that kind of looks like, because sometimes you'll get stuff that looks spammy or stuff that looks dodgy. We right. want to download Visual Studio. The title says download Visual Studio code. Mm -hmm. And the URL. And the, well, oh, gosh, what's a URL? Oh, OK. It's a now. Uniform. Heck, 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 heck. That's OK. Um, I've completely forgot what URL stands for. <laughs> uh, I was a uniform resource locator. Yes. You got it. Um, and that's sort of the web address. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. Let us drop in the Wikipedia just for funsies. Thanks, Brian. Um, so, do we want to? That I feel reasonably confident. It does say download, which is one of those keywords I'm a little bit hesitant about. Mm -hmm. But if we click on that, we could we could yep. see how we feel about it. Let's see. All right. So this first one, we're going to click on the download. Boop. Oh, so I'm seeing the Visual Studio logo. I'm seeing the Visual Studio in the URL. That still seems exactly. okay. Yep. All legit. Yeah. So we've already talked about you can have different kinds of text editors. You could have different kinds of browsers. Mm -hmm. The operating system is the, the sort of underlying program on your machine. Yes. So if you look at your keyboard and you've got a little Windows logo, Mm -hmm. You're probably using Windows. Mm -hmm. If your computer was real heck expensive and it's got an <laughs> Apple on the back, you probably want the. If you're a Linux user, you already know you're a Linux user, and you don't you don't need this video. You're fine. You did that on purpose. Don't worry. <laughs> like, so if you've never heard of Linux before, don't worry. As you get into programming, you're going to meet a bunch of people who are really excited to talk to you about Linux. Yeah. Uh, but for here. Oh gosh, Naya. So this is your computer. I've, I've, I'm hands off. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what what have you got? Yeah, so I have a Mac. I have work was so lovely to get me a Mac for for my job. So oh, for this is another reason to become a program because some, yes. sometimes your job will just send you a computer to use. It's great and it's free. It's a free computer. You've got to give it back. Yes, you, at the yeah. end. At the end. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you were just like it's free. I'm gonna I'm gonna get three. Oh, not, like, mm. yeah, no, no, not forever. <laughs> Um, so let's, yeah, so let's I think, do we just click on the big Mac with the arrow? We can, we can, let's see. Boop. Thank you for downloading. And then if you all saw down here, if you are also on a Mac down here, it started to do the download for, um, for VS code. So we just have to wait a couple seconds until this finishes. And then we're going to, um, what they call double click into it. Yeah. I'm going to say a very old lady thing here because yeah. this is about halfway done. Okay. And back in my day, <laughs> back when getting the, the internet access at home was yep. relatively new, this would have been three, four, six hours. And you know oh, your mom would have come and picked up the phone at some point, which disconnects you from the internet. Ruined the whole thing. Yeah. Naya, no. you are about six months old. I know that you've just heard other old people talking about this. But, I but, I was, I was yeah, so I know. Bad, but still, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do remember that. You couldn't use the internet and the cell phone at the same time. Wild. Wild. <laughs> so Love it me. looks like just me being elderly was long enough to have that work. And if 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 you all are, are young enough where you don't remember internet coming in along your phone line, what a beautiful beautiful time to be alive exactly oh i mean y'all now because like back then it wasn't great <laughs> so okay it's downloaded how do, how do we do the how thing? do we get into it yeah so what i would do because i'm using a trackpad um uh, on a mac so i'm going to double click this so we do one two and it's going to open it right up so it's expanding okay and so it opened it right up i'm going to move this over so just gonna, oh gosh, we're, so this yes. is our downloads file. That's right. It moved it over to our downloads folder um, and it might move it into different areas for y'all, but I think initially it'll start it off in the downloads folder. And what we wanna do is we wanna open it up. So we'll do that hefty old double click again, double click. <gasps> oh, and, and we've got our we VS, oh, oh, so we've got the little warning. Mm -hmm. says, hey, hey, hey. That's right. You got this off the internet, like where else would you get it? Exactly. That's always what I say. And it's just asking you if you want to trust it. Yes, we do, because it is from um, a trusted um, trusted group, Visual Studio Code. We know it. it's not some random thing off the internet. Um, so let's press open here. You all are so patient just to have us like let you be like, we got to be careful. Oh, that's <laughs> it. That's Yay! it. This is it, everyone. So let's expand. So what I'm doing is I'm dragging the corners and expanding it. Um, you can also expand it via this green button if you're on a Mac again, enter a full screen, for example, but I'm just going to expand it here um, so we can see the whole thing. Can I have a little plus plus here to, to make it bigger? To see these words. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is scary. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, this is not so scary. There's a lot here, but let's so, bring it in. 
here, it looks like the first thing it wants us get to give us options are color themes. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you can this custom. Is probably it. not the most important thing to do. No, but um, so if we wanted, there's a whole bunch of other color themes, but we might, might want to pick one of these just to not yeah. waste each other's time. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I will be like, oh no, what about this kind of pink? <laughs> I got gotcha. you. What do you think, so dark or light? Ooh, I know so many people feel some type of way about this. This is one of those 15, the 15 yeah. nerd arguments is like dark yeah. mode, light mode. Y'all in the comments, which one should I choose? Which ones are y'all choosing? Are I mean, in my heart, I've already chosen something, but <laughs> um, yeah, what do we think? Dark yeah, mode, maybe. light mode. I've dark actually mode. got one I got from Ramon, which is like, um, Ramon, I think you're hiding somewhere. What was that theme called? It was something like pastel vampire. It's it's oh, like that one. yeah, that was beautiful. It's so pretty. Yeah. Okay, we've got folks saying that we have to have dark mode. We're doing uh, it. But I'm again elderly, so can I have can I have high contrast at least? Oh, Ramon is saying he uses Dracula. That's what it was. Dracula that is so cute and good. Yeah. yeah. Do we want to search and see if we can find it and see more themes? Oh, you know what? Every every bit. So we've got five votes for dark mode, one vote for light, and and one vote for Dracula. So us picking Dracula would be unkind. <laughs> that would. Okay, so we we could we could do this. This yeah. is a dark contrast one. So what's the other thing we need to do next? Sync to and from other. Oh, so we might be able to skip this next one. What does this mean when we look when we look at the next uh, option on our left? So oh. we picked our theme. Yep. And awesome. here. It's saying sync to and from other devices. Very cool. Do you know what? I think this is for people who are so fancy. They have multiple computers they program mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. That's not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I think we can skip that one for now. That's not a yeah. super important setting just now. Agreed. What's so the perfect. next one? Let's see. One shortcut to access everything. Oh, so this is really powerful. Yeah. But what, do we maybe want to skip it for now? I think so. Yeah, we'll skip mm -hmm. it for now. And then rich support for all languages. So this is really cool. Mm -hmm. So this is saying that you can add extensions that'll underline errors, that'll automatically format it. And this is, this is going to be depending on what kind of programming you do. Right. I see HTML and CSS in here. Do we want to go get an extension for HTML and CSS? Ooh, I'd love that. I'll let you all know that this might be really distracting when you first start, but Definitely. that's cool. We love it. We love things being a little distracting. going to be fine. Let's jump in. Okay, so I clicked browse extensions. So they have a couple recommended languages up here. And then we see one that has 15 million downloads. This little marker up here lets you know how many people trust it or how many people have downloaded it before. 15 million people said, yes, this is an excellent extension. Like, uh, oh, do you know what? Sergey points out that light mm -hmm. mode might be more readable for us presenting. Oh. Sergey, that's what you get making an extremely good point. <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead and add this first and we can go ahead and see, we'll, 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 we'll try one and then the other. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, just to see how those feel. Yeah. Love it. So let's go ahead and install that by clicking install. Perfect. Oh, that's it. It's done. And it's done really quick. Okay. Is there a way to close this and come back? Of course. So here, and okay. then you want to close the whole thing. So this welcome thing seems to be guiding us through all the steps we need. Yes. Oh, the last one is open up our code. Boom. Okay, so this is where we have to stop for a second. Mm -hmm. Because one of the one of the big things that we we have uh, a difficult time with, we as we program moving out of a tutorial environment and into real world coding environments yeah. is that the tutorial environment gives us all of the tabs we need. Yep. And it gets hard to imagine that these are individual files. Mm. And that they're files living in a folder. Right. So 
would it, so it wants us to pick a folder. Would it be okay to make a new folder on your desktop and we'll pick that one? I think we absolutely should. You're very patient. (laughs) Not at all. Okay. So I, oh, please. Yeah, no, you know, I was, you, I was just going to say nice things about you while you open it while you oh, wait. So you. Naya and I worked together in projects before. So Naya is very familiar with me being mean and a bully. So me saying, Oh, could you please? is like chop, chop. <laughs> Make it happen. Make it happen. Please. So this is the desktop. Let's do. Okay, let's create something. I and it's so interesting. You you all will learn about this a little bit later, but I usually create all my folders via the terminal. <laughs> we'll get to the terminal. The terminal is oh, what's the terminal? It's it's so the terminal, how I've described it to folk who've never used the terminal before is um it is like the Uh, what I would call the back end of your computer. So if we were to describe this as the front end, so meaning like everything is very pretty, right? We have designs, we have curves, we have colors and buttons and and things that look really nice. So this is like the front end of our computer has all the designs and, and everything that you can see, you can visually see. And then the back end, uh, how I would call the terminal being the back end, it's all just text and uh, (laughs) it is definitely not as pretty some you can make pretty um you can design uh do different designs and do different colors and things for the terminal um but it really is just like the basic bones of your computer it's it just tells you it helps you understand the file and folder structures on your computer you can quickly navigate and jump to different areas within your computer without having to, for example, oh, I'm going to go down to the notes icon or, or, or a specific folder I'm going to navigate in Finder. So the terminal allows you to just use a couple commands um, uh, and a command, I'll describe that as well. A command is, um, uh, it's a way to tell the computer to do something. Um, so there's different ways to tell your computer to do something in the terminal. Um, and, and, uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. I know through this, I promise we're not going to let the terminal hurt you yet. Like um, we won't. Yeah. I always describe the terminal as, you know, in, in movies and shows where they're showing hackers and it's just sort of a wall of text. That's what it feels. And it feels like it would be really easy to break your computer. Yep. Um, and it, it, it might be, but it's, it's for now, we're not going to do anything that breaks it. And we're not going to do anything with the terminal at all. Yeah. So. And that's okay. All right. So I am, doo, 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 I just said to open up a new folder, but it, I think it might've opened up on my other screen. I have multiple screens going y'all. Which is another programming nerd thing, which I, I totally, res- I refuse. I, I have <laughs> one terrifyingly large screen. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. So it made them within this thing. So I'll just get rid of the second one here. Do, 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 move to, move to trash. (gasps) No. And it's gone. Okay. And so what do we, uh, oh, sorry. I clicked into it. That might've been scary for folk. What do we want to name this folder? Let's rename it. Uh, And quickly what I did here is I two finger clicked and then um, uh, press rename. So for folk who don't know that process. I think maybe calling it Hello World, because what we're going to do is we're just going to make a little Hello World. That's right. And we're going to make it out of different files. Mm -hmm. Uh, And one of our files is going to be completely blank, I think. So we definitely need an HTML file. Mm -hmm. We need a CSS file. But we're not going to learn how to make them hold hands for a couple sessions yet. That's okay. Yeah. So here, what, what, what is in the folder? So I'm going to double click into it. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing. Nothing Nothing yet. That's the key. Oh, nothing yet. Yeah. So if we come back to VS Code and it asks us to pick a folder. Perfect. So I just exited that out. It's going to save. Don't don't think it's going to disappear. And then we're going to click this again that says pick a folder. And we should be able to. I'll go back to the desktop. And here we are. Hello world folder. We're going to press open for that. And we get... Ooh, oh, some things happening. So we did get a permission where it's like, ah, 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 ah. Mm-hmm. Is VS Code allowed to do that? Yes. We're going to okay. click OK. 
And that's your computer. Right. And now VS Code is asking, mm -hmm. uh, 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 do you that's want right. that folder? So I like this. It's very secure, which is excellent. So we're just going to click, yes, we trust the authors because we are the authors. We understand it. Um, and you can also um, uh, trust the authors if you know, you know, who, who, who created whatever code that you're going to be bringing down or whatever folder. So I often press yes. There we go. And now we are in. We are but there's in. nothing here. There's nothing here yet. That's right. Okay. So I thought what would might be nice to do is mm -hmm. to practice creating a couple mm -hmm. of files, yep. saving a couple of files, Perfect. writing a little, oh, do you know what? We don't even have to write it. We can steal it off of the free code camp tutorial. Yes. I love that. Um, and then it might be really cool to, to open it up and see what it looks like to, to open our file locally. Yeah. And we'll talk about like what local means more mm -hmm. in a little minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not going to hurt us. Yeah. Uh, but can we try switching between dark mode and light mode just to see how it feels? Absolutely can. So do we <laughs> want to do light high contrast or light modern? We did high contrast last time. Do we want to try modern this time? Let's do it. <gasps> All right. Oh. So much. Yeah. Solid. So. Very bright on you. So I'm, I'm sorry for everyone. <laughs> Let's create a new file. And I think there's a couple different ways to do this. Mm -hmm, there are. Okay. So if we want to create a new file, just like Jess said, there's a number of different ways we can do this. Um, so if one way is going to hover over the folder that you oh. created here. Yep. And it brings up these little icons when you hover over it. So you, if you get out of that, the icons just disappear. They're still ah. there. You come back, the icons are there. And so, so these, yeah, go ahead. I, I, I think I, I could tell, I've never, I've never actually used these icons before. Oh, yeah. I think I've got a couple guests. Oh, and they're labeled if you hover mm -hmm. over them. It so helps. it looks like new file, new yep. folder, refresh yep. and copy. Exactly. Collapse. Collapse, not copy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's not fair. Cause that looks like copy. <laughs> the, it does look like the copy icon. Yeah. So what I would have done if I was brand new is probably mm -hmm. come up to the top bar where it says file. That's right. And from file, new file. New file. But what I do on my own is I right click in that column, in the Explorer column oh, and add it that way. Very cool. So there's so many different ways. Okay. So right click, which is double click hey. on the trackpad, and then you can press new file here. So, so many different ways to create a new file. Perfect. Okay. And then you can see here, if we wanted to press this, boop, it's just a different, uh, a different look to it. Yeah. Perfect. But let's do, let's do um, your way where we're pressing <laughs> appeared up to file. We press new file. And then here VS code is asking us, what kind of file do you want? Is so, it a mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah. And, and I think that, that we're going to have to give a little bit of a spoiler for, for, for this week in the bootcamp, because mm -hmm. when you start a new HTML file, mm -hmm. there's something that you always name the main homepage of your website. Right. I'm I like, I see some of these names and it's folks who've, a couple of y'all have either, oh, I see two of you that I know are professional developers. <laughs> um, I know I some of you have done this before. What should we name the html file that's the main file for our website that's right um, and while we're waiting for delay to catch up with people yeah. wh why do we always have to name the main landing page if we come to um fish.com why do we always have to name that landing page that that page you first land on when you you put in the domain name what mm -hmm. <gasps> matthew after my yeah. own heart yes. why that's do we have right. to name that something special mm-hmm Oh, actually, that's an advanced question. We will definitely talk about that towards the end of the boot camp. I'm like, oh, no, that's about the difference between domain names and URLs. Sergey, as well, we've got folks saying index, Excellent. index, index. Right. And Matthew, I especially want to, whatever whatever call out is for yep. peaceful folks. Um, what we're doing here is it's index.html because that file extension. So the name of your file comes mm -hmm. before the dot. And the extension, what type of file it is, comes after the dot. That's right. And it being an HTML file is important. Back in my day, it was HTM as well. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. <laughs> I love how you were like, oh, I saw that in a book once. <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> I'm I'm just old and mean, <laughs> but if we if we could just type the file that we want the name we want our new file to be. Yes, we can. And Matthew's absolutely correct, and Sergey as well. It's going to be named index dot, and then we're going to do dot html, and then we should be able to press enter here, and then it'll create it for us. Perfect. And then saying, uh, are we going to? Oh, so this is also creating the file on your computer at the same time. At the same time, everyone. Everything's exactly. fine. Everything yeah. is easy. So perfect. We're going to create the blue button that says create file. And we're in. So it showed up here. Is it also in your folder as well? It should be. Let's go check. We'll go back to desktop. Hello world. We're going to double click into here. Boom. Oh. It's there. What happens if we click on it? Nothing. Oh, Nothing yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, And I do want to apologize. I've got a bunch of very ugly cats. So if y'all just see any cursed goblins coming across the screen, they, they're just, just jealous. Great. They're really great. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, look at that baby. Politely disagree. <laughs> um, so lovely. we could either fill in our HTML or we can make our CSS file. Yes. Let's always try to, um, well, not always, but um, we can create, let's create the structure first. So let's yeah. start off with creating the CSS file as well. And this is going to feel a little bit abstract. Mm -hmm. But later on, our HTML and CSS files are going to work together to deliver our, our, our website. Nice. Right now, they're completely separate things until we learn how HTML and CSS works. Yeah. Sir, sir. Um, unfortunately, our live streams are at cat dinner o'clock, so so this may be a common reoccurrence. And Thanks. just a little bit of background for folk, um, similar to the index.html file um, for CSS, you would normally call it style. Or. Yes. <laughs> or, hit me, Jess. Styles. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. So one of the other works. Um, yeah. um, there should really be more arguments about this than, than there are, but, mm -hmm. oh, so somebody is saying they've got an issue with the chat being locked. Let me have a look at that. Everything's yeah. fine. Thank you for letting us know, Deborah. Sorry, me saying everything's fine when you say stuff isn't working right. That's nice and stressful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So, with our index HTML, sweet. Let's let's cheat. Yeah. So I'm gonna share my screen as well, Perfect. which is like a cheat battle. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come back to that first free code camp lesson. Yep. Get started as free. Oh, heck, I've said I'm sharing my screen and I did nothing of the sort. Let's get, hmm, where are you? Here you are, everything's fine. So I'm gonna come into what we're gonna be working on tomorrow, yep. the cat photo app. This, oh, dang, look at all this stuff we're gonna bake tomorrow. Please. Just start coding. So here, I so I've, I've been told that, that great artists steal. And I, I think the web is nothing if not a weird place to do art. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, I'm only seeing one, two, three, four, five lines of code, mm -hmm. and then some instructions. Would it be okay to just steal these five lines of code? And we'll preview them as we go. Yes. So I'm going to send this to you in the chat, the Perfect. secret behind the scenes chat. <laughs> the only thing we do in there is, is trade links and say nice things about the learners. So I'm going to take this away so, so that you could share your screen and do all the hard work. Oh, no, not at all. Um, and we can either type it out or copy and paste. But I think maybe that VS Code does some cool things mm -hmm. if we type it out. Boom. Let's see. Boop. All right. And we're back. 
Boop is a very important, highly technical term. <laughs> so, oh, look at this. We, oh, oh, we could do, oh, we do just, both at the same yeah. time. Just making sure we can see both. I'm just scrunching this um, click and drag to scrunch it. Scrunch is a highly technical term as well. Like I do a lot of scrunching. Oh, yeah. Face That's scrunching, right. heart scrunching, and here screen scrunching. <laughs> screen scrunching. So yeah. here mm -hmm. on our line one, should we type a little Pac-Man and HTML and a we closing Pac-Man? We should. So we're going to do a little um, Pac-Man or carrot, as they say. Oh, open carrot. <laughs> Uh, which so, is far better than the chompy babies, I tell the learners. Oh, do you know what? It's trying to get us to do a doc type, and that mm. is absolutely technically correct. Right. So the right. thing is, it's technically correct in a way we're going to learn about tomorrow. Yeah. So we can include it just out of best practice, mm -hmm. or we can ignore it for now. We're, we're going to yeah, okay. include it. Yeah, we can include it. It might be a little, it might be a lot. So let's see, let's see what it looks like. Do you know what? Just to cheat, this is something we just put at the top of an HTML file. Why? Exactly. Because we do. That's right. Yeah. And that's fine. Perfect. Back okay. in my day, you had to choose which version of HTML. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. You're laughing. You'd be like, Jess, that's not true. No, it, <laughs> it is. Don't worry. You're good. So we're actually going to have six lines where this one has five, because I think we, we also need HTML on a separate line. Mm -hmm. So let's open it up a new carrot and write HTML. Oh. Ooh. So it's um, given us a different uh, option to click on. So let's try it. Oh, All right. just finish the text for us. All right. Oh, and then as soon oh. as I closed it, it gave us what's called, and y'all are going to get into this, a closing um, uh, uh, oh, the terms yeah. are missing. The terms are roaming. Um, a, a closing, bracket. exactly. Yeah, closing bracket, but um, closing element here. Yeah. Here. So we're just. Ooh, I just want to go in between those. Oh. And as we can see, this is the same thing. And we're going to preview this tomorrow, mm -hmm. but the HTMLs here are our parent element of everything else in the page. Right. Uh, weirdly, in a very sort of Greek mythology thing, all of the children are swallowed by the parents uh, yes. in turn. I'm going to find a less um, horror movie way to describe that before tomorrow. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do you know what? It. All of the children live in the houses of their parents. There we go. That's that's much less okay. one of those devours is, is young. <laughs> oh. So... What else? Oh, and now we're going to add a body. That's right. So we're going to make sure we do some indentation because we want the HTML to know that this is a child element. It is the child to the parent. So the HTML is the parent, and then it's going to have a child called body. And they've done this in the tutorial environment as well. And this isn't just good for computers to know the thing. This is also good for us because as people, if I come and everything's lined up, They'll be like, oh, there's a problem in this child element. Who is the parent? Whereas the indentation makes it easy at a glance to, to yeah, to hopefully find out what's gone weird and what's okay. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay. All right. So we, we did our indentation and that's just pressing the tab. Some people, you can do spaces as well. Um, <gasps> that's, again, one of the 15... Yes. programmer arguments yeah yeah it genuinely doesn't matter i mean sometimes it matters but not in a way that is worth that much arguing <laughs> and y'all see again once i i um press the closing carrot or the closing pac-man it automatically gave me the um the finishing um uh, we always have an opening and then a closing version and the closing version has the slash so here opening version and then the closing version with the slash and so we want to make sure that we go between those to write whatever we're going to write. And just a preview, just so y'all get a, a little bit of a jump on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Here, both of those HTML opening tags and closing tags yes. make up the HTML element. That's right. Oh, yeah. And then the body opening and closing tag makes up the body element. Oh. Just like learning a new language that has irregular verbs, sometimes there are elements that are self-closing. So there's only one of them. 
True. But that is a tomorrow problem. <laughs> exactly. So we've got that. Oh, it looks like now we're going to do Hello World. We're going to do it H1. Yes. Which is the most important heading on your page. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people use it for styling, but this is, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about semantic HTML a lot. Right. And H1 is really important because it carries semantic, so inherent meaning exactly. that I am the most important. I am the parent heading mm -hmm. on this page. That's right. If I and catch y'all, oh, oh, sorry. No, you're good. I, I was just about to be mean to the learners. Be like, if I catch y'all using a bunch of different H1s on your page for styling, mm. I'm not going to get you, but I'll be very sad. We'll, when we yeah. break into CSS, we'll learn about how to style stuff without over-relying on H1s. Right. That's so perfect. if we if we open our opening carrot, yeah. um, which is far better than spiky baby, <laughs> uh, and pick H1. And it looks like it just wants us to put Hello World right in there. I love that. So we can either do um, do that all on the same line like we see here for Hello World for um, the free code camp. So I'll just copy the free code camp um, a way that they've done it instead of separating it just in case folks get confused. Um, but I'm just going to type Hello <gasps> World. So right, right now, don't push anything else. If you go and open up that file in your folder again... Mm -hmm. where it was blank last time. What is what what do we think it's going to look like? Ooh, and I'm not pressing anything else? Mm -mm. All right. And the it's only reason I'm I'm suggesting this is I've done this so many times. Okay, what happens? Let's click. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing's there. And I bet our learners can absolutely guess why this file mm -hmm. that we just created mm -hmm. is still blank even exactly. though we've written stuff here. Right. What's going on, everyone? Why is it still blank? Can anyone guess? Or does anyone know? Because if we change something in the tutorial environment, it shows us right away. That's true. But over here, we have an extra very step. cursed step. Yes. yes. Step. <laughs> it gets so many people, even senior devs who've been doing this for 10 years. They're like, oh, why isn't it? Why isn't it? Why isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you've, you've got to save it. Otherwise, nothing's happened. Exactly. Perfect. So you see here um, the, the like notation in Visual Studio Code that lets you know, hold up, this has not been saved, is this dot up <gasps> here. All right? The panic dot. The panic dot. It's there to remind you that whatever you've written does not exist yet on in your um, in your finder window or in the actual thing. You have to save this first. All right. And tomorrow, you and I are going to go set up a GitHub account. We won't we won't go too deep into GitHub because we've got uh, Rizelle from GitHub, who's so smart and so cool, joining awesome. us next. Tuesday? Tuesday is a guest. It. Yep. Uh, but that's going to be a different type of saving. That's going to be like an extra bonus saving. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got tons of folks in the chat be like, and the learners are, I told you these learners are so sweet. They're just like, y'all didn't save it. That's right. And we did not. And we did not. Y'all are the best. So we can save right. it a bunch of different ways as well. Yes. There I are. like a command S. I like that little shortcut. That's my shortcut too. So if you're on a Mac, you're going to um, uh, press Command S, Command and the letter S at the same time. And the Command button, if you're trying to find it, is right next to the space bar. It's on the left of your space bar. And you're going to press Command S at the same time. And you'll see, actually, this came up on my other screen. But you'll see that this alert box can come up. It doesn't always, but it can come up. Um, and so ooh, let's do ha ha's. <laughs> Let's, let me do that one more time because I have to be clicked onto the Visual Studio Code thing for this to actually save. So let me press Command S one more time. Look, the black dot is gone. Uh, and I'm this seeing a couple good. different people who who look like they're having their messages do weird stuff in the chat. I'm Thanks. so sorry, my loves. Do you yeah. know what? We'll get this ironed out before next time. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You're not in trouble. We're not deleting your messages. I think that computers are just terrible. They were a mistake. Always remember that, everyone. <laughs> I love it. Okay. 
Okay, so we see that we have now saved this. So for folk who know, um, what is going to change on our, um, uh, when we actually come and view this in our finder? So what's going to change? Is it still going to be a blank screen? I mean, it's saved. And mm -hmm. you said that was the, oh, you said, that's, that's very accusatory. Uh, multiple people said that was the problem last time. Just looking into the future, what do we think this website might look like? So, so what mm -hmm. we have the doc type where we're telling the browser what kind of file it is. Yep. Um, and then we've got these HTML elements. Yep. Okay. And the body element. I don't think I don't think the body looks like much by itself. I think is that structural. You don't think the body looks like much. Um, so I, I think I think just adding a body element. Oh, yes. It yeah. will not show anything. And with the main boot camp, the, I, I always like to tell learners that there's a couple different things you can do when you're not sure what's going on. You can ask somebody who knows. Mm -hmm. uh, these are not in any specific order because I actually like the last one best. And the, yeah. I usually slip through. Uh, you, you can look it up. Yes, always. Um, or you can get weird. And experiment. So we could delete that hello world. Mm -hmm. So so let's let's look at what this looks like first. Yes. But afterwards, I want to see what happens when we delete that H1. Beautiful. So I'm gonna double click and see it. <gasps> oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Just wrote some code. This is something I want to be really careful with because mm -hmm. on Wednesday we're gonna learn about Netlify and deployment. Mm -hmm. How to put your website on the internet. If if so, you, I see in the in the URL bar where we yeah. usually see a web address, it's okay. files slash slash users. Mm -hmm. So, if you if somebody else typed this into their browser, ah, they're not going to get anything. Correct, because this is a file that lives mm -hmm. locally on your computer. Only my computer has access to this <gasps> file. That's right. But on Wednesday, we'll learn about how to push a website. And maybe maybe we'll just push this website. We'll push this file we've been marking. That sounds great. Yeah. Oh, do you want to just keep using it? Yeah, we'll keep Brilliant. using it. Brilliant. I love it. So I think the only things we wanted to do mm -hmm. were, do we want to see what this looks like without the hello world? Yes. Let's delete this hello world. I'm going to highlight it and then delete. And then I'm going to save it so that it knows that there's been a change. All right, then I'm gonna come back and double click on that and oh. it's empty again. So it's not actually empty this time though, is it? Mm -hmm. That's correct, it's not actually empty. It's just that there's nothing displaying on the front end. The, the, the stuff correct. we have is this structural stuff. Hey, mm -hmm. here's our HTML element, here's right. our body element. Right. Oh. It's purely structural. It's not actually going to be shown to the user or to anyone who's looking at this, you know, website. It's not going to be shown. The stuff that's so, shown is your H1 and your H2s, and you're going to get into that tomorrow. Yeah. So just to preview something, this might be a really good time. If anybody has any questions, we can go mm -hmm. ahead and answer any of your questions about this. Or, okay. you know, I'm right here. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about the structure of the boot camp if you couldn't join us yeah. very eight, nine hours ago. <laughs> Um, and while, f like, while the delay of the internet is waiting to catch up with us, excuse yep. me, sir, uh, this might be a nice time to preview. Can we put that H1 back? It doesn't have to say hello world. It could say whatever. If we put that back and save it and then refresh our file, is there a way we can see, <laughs> that's very cool. Is there a way we can see mm -hmm. what the code looks like? in our yeah. file. So I think our browser has a way to show us the code we've written as well. Yep, it, it does. Perfect, so we see that there. And then, oh. And then if we don't have any questions, we might escape. So here, let's see, and, oh, I forgot. Oh, which which browser is this? This is Safari. Let me move it over to Chrome. 
I was going to cheat. So there's a, we're looking for a show source safari. Uh, oh, the develop menu from the top bar does it in Safari. Oh, but here oh, we are. Okay. Here we are in Chrome. What, you, what did you press to get this in Chrome? Oh, excellent point. Let me go back, everyone. Okay, so let me exit this out so that you can actually see what's going on. So what I press is that I, I did a right click. And then you're in order to see the what they call source code. or Which is the HTML we just wrote. That's right, that we just wrote. You're going to go down all the way to the bottom. It might not be at the bottom for your computer, but you're looking for this inspect tab right here. And that's what you want to click. Boom. And it's going to open up all this stuff on the, on the right or maybe on the bottom for you. But it's going to be all of this stuff that's actually, that is the HTML that we just wrote. Oh, nice. And it's like highlighting the element. That's very cool. Yep, so we're going to do some proper HTML from tomorrow so this yeah. is this is just a preview uh but then tomorrow you and i are going to look at getting a github account set up for the first time okay. so if folks are brand new for development yeah. if you're not brand new this is probably pretty boring yep and that's okay <laughs> you're helping us <laughs> by being in the chat and helping our users amazing yeah. so if yeah. we don't have any questions so if folks do have questions and they're not in so they can come to the boot camp uh discord and that's just fine yep. Uh, but there's a there's a Couchbase one as well. If folks have questions about databases or Couchbase specifically, yes. Um, where where is that? Yeah. So that let me bring it right up. Uh -huh. so, oh, this is where we would go. So um, if you want to learn more any more about Couchbase or myself as the developer evangelist for the team, um, Jess as well, right as the developer yeah. educator. Um, uh, then you can go join our, uh, our join our Discord um, here, and I'll drop the information I was in the ask. various chats. Ah, Jess is on it. Jess oh no, on. I can't do it. I, I like okay. I, I just tried to click, and the computer was like, "No, that's not no on your way. screen." Yeah, it's definitely not. Okay, so I'm adding it here in um, in the chat, um, and it did in so many different places. That's perfect. So please feel free to join our Discord. Come on in in um, in our Discord if you want to learn anything about Couchbase, right? Um, so more about how we use databases to help you as the as a developer um, build your projects or, or your products, um, uh, you can do so in there. Um, but we also have a different page, which is our Couchbase community page. And I'll also drop that just in case it's helpful for folk. Um, it's where you can come and, and learn more about Couchbase in different spaces um, and um, uh, come ask your questions. Um, and then lastly, we have, you can, if you wanted to learn more about me and the work that I do at Couchbase, or you want to make sure that you come to these streams, because I love to teach with Jess, some really um, incredible things for early career and intermediate career developers. You can follow me on social media. So both Twitter and Twitch um, at the same handle there. And I'll go ahead and add it. So whenever I'm offline, it shows your Twitch just for fun. Like we, we are on very different schedules. It'll be fair. Of course. <laughs> I am going to very affectionately hang mm -hmm. up on you. That sounds wonderful. Well, thank you, Jess. This has been so much fun. I hope y'all have enjoyed. Thank y'all so much for coming. Um, and I can't wait to see y'all tomorrow. Please join us where we're going to be learning about GitHub. Yeah. So we're just going to do the very basic steps. We're going to sign up for a new account. Yep. And then we're going to connect it to our VS Code so that when mm -hmm. we save stuff, we can save it to get as well and get oh just a preview what's a get what's the version control <laughs> we're going to get into it um cool. but get and github are different different so that's the first thing to know um but what version control is just a little overview is for example if we saw that um uh, we had written a little bit of code here and we saved it, right? So we saved it a couple of times. Um, what you can do is what GitHub does, it's it's really a record of all the, um, it's not specifically the saves that you did, but it's really a record of your code and how it changes through time. So y'all saw that every time we went to Finder and we wanted to actually show it in the, um, in the browser itself, um, what you can do is once you're done writing like a chunk of code, even this, for example, we can say, you know what, I want to send this up 
to GitHub. And so there's a couple of commands that we can do to, to send it up to GitHub so that GitHub has a saved version of your code at its place right now. And then when you update it, you can send that version up to GitHub and it saves that version too. And it also takes note of the changes in your code. So this is a great way to be able to have a track of, 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 of your progress and also be able to share, um, uh, share your code with other people as well. We'll get into it more. Amazing. I'll let you go. Thank you so much. Thank y'all. Talk to you soon. Later. Bye. Bye.